Okay, thanks. Um, welcome everyone to our feature vision for pipeline, parent child pipeline session. Um, I hope you had a chance to take a look at the, the issue that I, I sent to our team in Slack for having a head start on what the difference are between multi project pipelines and the parent child pipeline. That is the topic for this session. Um, the agenda I added to the meeting invite this morning, so you didn't get to see that, go ahead and go out there and uh, grab that. What I want to get out of this session is to start the discussion of um, what we want to, how we want parent-child pipeline to, to, to uh, the vision for it as a whole, but I, I know we probably won't get through everything. So I did put on the agenda at the top, uh, a link to the issue for async collaboration so we can continue some of this discussion. Um, and then out of that async collaboration, if it seems that we wanna have another live session um, to talk through some more things, I can schedule that as a follow-up. So um, the recording from this I'll add to, to unfiltered as well, um, uploaded. And then there's the link to the, the playlist where I'll add it to. So um, for today's topic, we'll start with um, Fabio, you have the first agenda item to talk through. Yeah, so I think it makes sense to start with the definition of parent child pipeline, or at least like what child pipelines are in comparison with the, the normal standalone pipelines. Uh, and I, just to simply put there, uh, they are considered the subcomponents of a parent pipeline. So you, the, the purpose of child pipelines is to break down a complex pipeline into smaller pieces and more manageable pieces. But uh, um, the overall goal is to uh, contribute to the parent pipeline, to, to the goal of the parent pipeline. And the analogy there is like a, yeah, a breaking down like a program into smaller functions, or as Shirega was saying, also like a process and sub process. Um, so this is kind of the, the general idea, which is also one main difference with the multi-project pipelines where both upstream and downstream pipelines are separate and independent and standalone pipelines. It just happened that one is triggered by another one, but they don't have control over each other, uh, except for maybe passing some variables downstream. While with the ch parent-child pipelines, the parent has control over the structure of the pipeline because it's in the parent where we define how the child pipelines, the structure of the child pipelines is actually defined uh, in, in a file that is uh, called by the parent. Uh, so I think these are kind of the, the main difference and uh, uh, just I want to highlight that uh, just to, to kind of frame the conversation a little bit better. Thank you, Fabio. Um, and then, um, by the way, I moved the agenda item that was about the differences in that issue to the top of the agenda since it's just, it was just for read only. Um, Jigorsh, did you have an additional comment there? I think that Fabio covered that word. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was that. Uh, thanks for that overview. I, I actually, it was not clear to me um, until you framed it that way, Fabio. Um, how to think of parent-child pipelines. Um, Sorry, uh, do, do we know idea? Do we have ideas for uh, use cases for the parent-child pipeline? Yeah, um, mono repos would be um, mm -hmm. a big one. Yeah. So when we, when we, um, when we, deliver a parent-child pipeline. That was the main use case um, to Miguel too, for teams that wanted to make their mono repo a little easier to understand to break them into um, smaller components. That was the main use case. So the, the pipelines are meant to live in the same repository. It's not for separate projects. That was the original premise of the parent-child pipeline. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, now we do support triggering a child pipeline from a different repository. Can you talk about that? Because I, I, that was something new that very recent um, that was delivered. Dove, can you can you speak to that? Because I, I wasn't yeah. aware of that. 
Yeah, something that we added in 13.5, I think, was scheduled before that we got the, based on the, an old issue or a couple of months old issue, we got like a request from customers asking to be able to trigger a child that lives in a different repo. Up until 13.5, it wasn't possible. So we've added this. And I think this is where we kind of like, maybe confused about, okay, what's the differences between the multi-project pipeline and the parent-child pipeline? And at least for me, it was like a big confusion. Also like a question, uh, you mentioned monorepo. Uh, can't users solve this, I guess, this use case with the multi, uh, uh, multi-project pipeline? Why do they need a, a the parent child. Yeah, they could. Um, it would just mean they would need to change their architecture of their project to instead of using the single repo to break their project, say front end and back end into like API and front end um, client and server into two different repos um, to handle their pipelines that way. Um, but like a lot of organizations prefer the mono repo, so um, it they can handle their CI with parent-child pipelines. Thanks. Uh, just a quick clarification on the feature that we added in 13.5 about the uh, pipe, parent pipeline and other projects. Um, so the, the child pipeline is still going to be triggered in the same project. The, the difference is that we are allowing to take the configuration from another project that will detect this destruction of the pipeline and, and use that to generate a, pipe, a pipeline within the same repo. So the, the purpose of the parent-child pipeline still remains the same because it's like breaking down a pipeline into smaller pieces, but rather than defining the structure of the, the child pipeline in the same repo, that can be defined in a different repo, which could be, um, could be also, uh, let's say, uh, a set of uh, recipes uh, for for different things. And you want to say, I want to create a child pipeline for this thing, and you actually take that uh, com configuration from a different repo, for example. Um, it's just where the configuration is coming from, but the actual pipeline still runs within the same project. So it's still a sub pipeline of the parent pipeline. Yeah. Is the configuration included using an include keyword? Yeah. Is that how, okay. Okay. So because we are using include, then we are inheriting all the power of include. So we can, um, in theory, have a sort of a, a template that we can spawn as a child pipeline by only running whatever is in that template, mm -hmm. or to take the configuration from a remote URL. That, so whatever, that could be also dynamically generated, and whatever is coming from that URL can be run as a, as a child pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this kind of leads me to another conversation we could probably have at the end, which is the, the CI recipes um, that we could probably talk later about this. Uh, I'll just add that to the agenda. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm glad you clarified that because um, Dove, it sounds like though the integrity and the regional intent of parent child pipeline is still preserved even with that recent feature that was added in 13.5. Um, because um, one thing, yeah, because yeah. so one thing that Dove and I wasn't sure is, is with that recent uh, change in 13.5, does it mean that um, the, 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 the concept of multi-project pipeline or parent-child pipeline has kind of merged into one and that's not the case? Okay. Okay. Um, um, are there any other comments from folks on agenda item one, as far as questions about what a parent a child pipeline is or parent uh, child pipeline. I read somewhere um, so I read somewhere in one of the issues that uh, in include we cannot pass a variable but uh, in parent child pipeline that's possible so is there any plan to enable uh, passing variables in includes uh, I, so I, I, today is not possible to use includes and whatever is specified in the include to be taken from a variable or to use variables there. 
Uh, that's not possible. It is possible, and it, I think and we do have an issue for that um, about yeah, using really. variables within Intel. Uh, but it's possible to pass variables to child pipelines from the parent as well as for multi-project pipelines. So whenever for, for both types of uh, downstream pipeline, pipelines, it's possible to say trigger this pipeline and the upstream pipeline also passes some variables downstream. Uh, and this is a kind of interesting scenario because we could, by passing variables, we could also use the concept of variables as sort of uh, input parameters to say uh, the child pipeline can be the same, like it, let's imagine it's more like a, a function uh, in programming language. And we pass in some variables uh, that would be equivalent of parameters. And, and we, would we would be able to run the same sort of structure pipeline by passing different parameters uh, from different repositories, for example. And that will run as a, as a child pipeline. So it's like the blueprint is defined in the YAML file, but the instance of running of that pipeline will be running within the same project. Hey, Fabio, one thing you said, um, I want to get clarification. You said today it is possible to pass variables between upstream and downstream pipeline. I know that term upstream and downstream is very generic. It can apply both to parent-child pipelines and um, multi-project pipeline. Is that the case? Yes, yeah. Okay. So I, I use downstream to, for, for both types. Yeah. Okay. I think that we have some, we are not 100% uh, consistent in this terminology, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. We have, have an issue. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I do want to come back to, um, and, and Dove, you may not be aware of this, we have an issue um, to standardize on the just the the terms we use, the nomenclature for for pipelines upstream, downstream, but that's another topic too. I'll find that issue, Dove, and share it with you. I have another question. Uh, is there um, who, who is the parent and who is the child? So, so I just want to understand when when we have a pipeline defined, uh, um, we include it into another pipeline. So, does that make the the pipeline that is included the the child pipeline or the or the so? Part? So, uh, imagine you have. Um, your repo and you have your root CI YAML file, that's mm -hmm. going to be your parent. Um, and then anything you include, um, most likely like that, that will spawn your child pipeline. I don't understand because if, if, if I include the, if I include another pipeline and I use it as a blueprint, I, I could think of that as the parent and I, I include it with some variables that are set. Is correct? I think it's not. Um, so we have two we, we use the include feature for two different purposes, and I think it's important to highlight that. So we have, you know, the the one we've been using before parent pipeline is include a snippet of YAML configuration in this current uh, YAML, and that that will, will cause the whole configuration to be merged. So. But we are using the same feature for a different purpose. So what we are saying for with parent-child pipeline is trigger another pipeline. So it's like a spawn another subprocess of this pipeline. And but we when we spawn a subprocess, we need to tell the subprocess what configuration should we use. Like what do what should this pipeline look like? And in, the, in this case, we use the include to say use this YAML file or use a combination of these YAML files. And whatever there is, the result uh, will be passed to the downstream pipeline as, as a structure. So because each pipeline needs to have a structure, right? right? So the parent normally takes that from the .gitlab CI YAML. Uh, but then when we spawn a child pipeline, we need to tell where this configuration file is because it can't be the same with the lab CI YAML. Otherwise, we're going to create another okay. identical pipeline. So we need to create another pipeline mm -hmm. with different structure. And we pass in, we tell basically this child pipeline, use this structure. And we pass that through the include keyword. So that's why we have two different types of include. One is to merge uh, snippets, uh, is to use top level on the GitLab CI YAML. And the other one is, is used nested to the trigger uh, keyword. Okay. okay, thanks. 
So also... trigger include trigger include will be for child like one. Yeah, that oh. yeah, that's the key difference. I, I could definitely see how that's confusing. Um, I left a uh, link in the agenda with uh, uh, a test repo that I use personally for parent child pipelines is public. So if you want to go look at that and kind of look a little bit, you know, into it, it's there. Okay, thanks. I, and I have a, a question on that subject because um, we're saying the includes with the trigger of, from from what I've I've used personally, uh, like the parent child pipeline. I've always used the trigger keyword, which links to a different CI config file. And even if it's in the same repo, right? And then instead of using the includes keyword, I can link directly to a YAML file. And that is that technically still a parent child pipeline because it's still run in the same repository or is it different? If you use trigger and then include and then you specify the file name, that uses the, the, the parent child pipeline. Right, okay, yeah, exactly. But if you use trigger and then you use, uh, uh, you specify the project, project and ref, and uh, then that case you are actually triggered a multi-project pipeline. Yeah, that makes sense, thanks. Hey, Miguel, back to your question also, what were the use cases? Um, one of the reasons that um, users was wanting to be able to break down the mono repo was also performance. When the mono repo was broken down into smaller child pipelines, those child pipelines can run concurrently, which would help with performance of the execution time on the pipeline. And then, and then for visualization as well, when you can visualize parts of the pipeline as child, as opposed to the entire thing, it made it easier on our system too for visualization. And also it's it's good for namespacing because you can then use the same name in a different pipeline, mm -hmm. right? Or different, or the same stage. So you could say for this part of the application, it's still build, test and deploy, right? And you could have these three stage broken down for each part of your application and then that makes sense. Yep. Any other questions folks on how the parent-child pipelines work and... Um, okay. Um, so, um, Dove, I might, um, I might come back to your number two. We, we might talk about that async and the issue. I do want to get to, um, some of the questions of how we, what is our vision for this feature? Um, what it basically we want it to be or not want it to be. Um, thanks for adding those linked epics, Dove, number four. Um, so skipping two and three, because these are a repeat what, what we'll, we'll, in the async issue that we'll come back to, number four. Peyton, do you want to talk through your thought there? Sure, yeah. Um, I brought this up in our um, internal CI meeting, but now we have some PA uh, members here with us. Um, so initially, um, back before the split, Fabio and I worked on this feature. Um, and now that um, I'm on CI, uh, and Fabio still is, um, I believe uh, backend will still support um, that feature. But now since this feature's um, tightly grouped with uh, visualization and uh, pipeline authoring is currently handling that, um, I just want to kind of clarify, will PA uh, still support this in front end? Um, but uh, we'll have to uh, kind of, you know, still coordinate with our back end. Which, which issue is that? Are you referring to a specific issue? Number two, agenda item two. I think this is a very similar problem to bridge pipelines because uh, we can have uh, a lot of work that is needed to be done uh, on the visualization side and how we visualize, uh, visualize and uh, model pipelines using a syntax in the CI YAML file. Then we can have a lot of work around processing how uh, you know, we read the content of the child pipeline and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. And just like a, to add to another, I think I think we will collaborate on this feature just because um, 
Well, well, it makes sense because we both kind of are going to touch this. I think thinking is going to be the most important, and we might we might find a formula just by experience, like oh, this is this kind of issue on the front end, so it might make sense to send it to PA, or this might be in CI. And I can tell, like I I know that the goal of how we're refactoring the graph right now is so that it it can be owned separately because the graph is going to be the same for visualization that it is for the CI run. But the difference is that they will each have their own uh, subcomponents, which they can own. So for example, in the CI run, all of the icons like play and retry and all of that are going to be owned by CI because they're going to be separate. Um, for downstream and upstream, they're being added in their own column. Um, so like the subcomponent for downstream and upstream in there could be owned technically purely by CI at some point, just because it's not going to be visualized the same way that it will be for execution, I think. Um, but I do think we'll have to sync up and kind of see what where that makes sense. Okay, so kind kind of what I'm getting from that is like CI still will handle some of the visualization. Yeah, that was the idea. It wasn't to kind of just cut it off entirely. It was more like when it's purely visualizing your YAML in terms of like how does that structure look like? That would be purely PA. But there's going to be overlap in the graph because sometimes CI might have very specific need on like how it executes or like action you have to perform on the graph, and that's why it's important we have a separation there where like we can each own our subcomponents. Yeah, I see you, your uh, your point B that you actually have an issue for parent-child pipelines and multi-project pipelines as milestones. So like that's a little bit of confusion for me. Like you know. Are yeah, we, it was for me too. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, are, are we both going to work on that, CI and MPA? Um, I get what you're saying, and that makes 100%. Um, but I kind of, I guess it's more of a question for, like, product and the EMs of, like, how we're going to handle this so the split isn't confusing. Um, and maybe this it, is one that just slipped through. I, I'm not sure. Gotcha. We don't, I don't have a good answer, Peyton, to be honest, because... Um, we're going to have to do it by feel at first. Um, I'll work with Cheryl, Sam, and, and Dove. And between the four of us, we'll probably have to figure out on a case-by-case -case basis. OK. Um, yeah. Uh, it's a tough one. I don't have an answer today for that. Um, OK. So that's something we'll have uh, just, to solve. Just a comment, I, I think, but the bridge pipeline is owned by PA. So, and that's the reason why today we still have issues on parent-child pipeline that is assigned to PA engineers. So do we want to like, are we thinking about switching this and make the parent-child fully owned by CI? Because no. this wasn't what I was aware of. No, that's not what we're saying. Um, Peyton's question was specific to the front end work. Um, if there's something that CI team is changing because of the processing of parent child pipeline or any bridge pipeline, um, and there's some front end work that has to change, um, what happens there? Does it get delayed and passed over to PA team? And then um, you would have to prioritize that work. My preference is not. My preference is whatever team is working on that feature or change, own it and get some consulting from the DRI team. Um, but I, I don't, it, it depends on the complexity of what it is, right? We don't want to yeah. accidentally make a change and then suddenly end up owning this very complex thing on it for a team that's not the DRI team. Yeah, I think thinking and uh, collaborating between the team is important. Yeah. Um, yeah. The good news of that is there's always going to be some um, uh, uh, cross training, shared knowledge across the two. I think of us as sibling teams. It seems a little more PC than to call us sister teams. We're sibling teams, and I think we'll always be joined at the hip at some some way or another. Um, okay. I think the source of some of the confusion is mainly around the overlap. For instance, artifact handling in parent-child. So artifact is CI, parent-child is, is PA. And so we have issues 
where we've been asked to uh, to do something around like artifacts in parent-child pipeline or bugs. And this is where we cannot find the right owner because if it's like artifact, then it's yeah. If it's parent-child, then it's VA. And this yeah. Is um, I, I agree with uh, uh, Cheryl's comment in the Zoom chat. Uh, what you're saying is another reason we need to get, do away with those scope labels, which is a big discussion for another session. <laughs> I don't want to hijack this one. Um, let's come back to that one. But there's an issue for that too. Um, okay, so agenda item three, Fred, let's go through your thought there. So um, it's just a quick thinking. Uh, I know that, and I, I've, I'm kind of anticipating because I've, I've seen Fabio answer, but um, would it make sense in the graph to differentiate visually when you've triggered, like your downstream is a child, parent child pipeline, or when it's a multi project pipeline? Um, and with Fabio, you can voice your, your thoughts. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it, well, I, I, it really depends also how other users uh, are using it. But I think in my opinion, it makes sense to distinguish if if a pipeline is running within the same project, so also in the same scope, or is a, another, uh, a trigger or against like another different pipeline where we don't really have a control. So for example, in, in our merge request uh, workflow, when we develop on, on, on GitLab work uh, uh, code, we might sometimes trigger a, a downstream pipeline on the the queue to run the QA like end to end system tests. Um, now, arguably, we might not have control of what is in that in a different project. So, uh, again, we might want to distinguish where something I'm running this pipeline or something else is triggering somewhere else, where it's just because the pipeline is configured in a certain, certain way, but it's something outside rather than being something like a child pipeline, but it is actually an important part uh, of the pipeline. So it's actually a sub part uh, of the pipeline. So I think these two, two distinctions are, are important. Right now, we actually putting, uh, yes, uh, Doug put uh, the screenshot. We are putting everything under the same downstream column and and they all look the same, while in reality, they should be two different things. So I think we were thinking about having a way where you can expand by clicking on the job that triggers a child pipeline, expand the pipeline from there. So in a way, having something that looks more like a, a one single pipeline graph that you can collapse child pipelines and expand, that probably could be a way of, of clarifying the fact that it is, in the end, one single pipeline, just broken down into small ones, uh, rather than being a chain of pipelines, like a, each of them like a, separate from each other. Yeah, I, I agree because like the, when you're when you're looking at multi pipeline project, you you have the same behavior as parent pipeline, a child pipeline right right now. If it if it triggered a pipeline, you can just fetch it. So you keep navigating and you don't know if you don't know if you're looking at a different project or like a sub part of your pipeline. Um, and I think I think the way to think about it in terms at least of how we, we could break it down is like upstream and downstream or the general term, right? Like it's like they're inclusive of both. If I'm not mistaken, like parent, child, and multi-project, so we can have common behavior for downstreams and upstream, and then specify behavior for parent, child, and for multi-project pipeline. I would like just to note that, like, so it was kind of like a very small MVC that we got out there. So we just, you know, stuck some labels on there to do the. It, we, our, our plan was to keep iterating on it and make it better, but it just got put at a halt. So like all these ideas are great to like improve it. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I didn't want to, my comment to come off as like, I'm crit criticizing what we already have. I know how it is. Uh, <laughs> it's more like that. I think that would be like a, a very a interesting next step, just starting visually and making sure people can, can see the difference. It can even trigger you to associate what you're seeing with your YAML, and then you can start being, oh, when I wrote this differently, there was this visual difference. So is there like it can even lead you to the documentation and go and read just because you're you're not sure why it's different, and then you'll understand better. Yeah, yeah, I didn't take it as like bad or anything. Uh, just yeah, we it, there's like a lot of improvement for what we can do. I think there's been some 
some time since that was rolled out. Do you do you guys think it's a good time to maybe run a solution validation around it and gather some inputs? So uh, I think by doing that, we can also figure out uh, if users prefer to know that their uh, the child pipeline belongs to a different project or not, or those kind of small little things matter to them uh, and should be represented visually as well. Um, I, I moved, yeah, I moved Dove's question earlier to number four there. Um, I don't, the answer to your question is, I don't think we've done a validation um, uh, with our existing users around parent child pipeline. Um, uh, yes, that's correct. Um, not since, since it was implemented. Um, so let's work on one uh, together. I think it's the right time. Yeah, is that something um, you and Nadia want to do, Dove, or you want Vikika and I? I think it should be a joint effort. Okay. All right. Okay. So that uh, probably, uh, folks, uh, the outcome of, of some of that validation research with users will also feed into whatever vision we have for this, uh, this feature, but that's to be determined. Um, okay. Um, any other, by the way, uh, Dove, the the screenshots that you pasted in, in the agenda, item E, um, 3E, I don't think that's only parent-child pipeline, right? Because that illustration would show, uh, like under the downstream column, one of them doesn't have a child label. So it's just a downstream project external to, it's not a child. I think it's yeah. You can see the label like child. I took it from the, the from our documentation. Not yeah, I I took that screenshot. So really, what's going on is just uh, what Fred and everyone were talking about earlier is like some of the confusion of like you can still like it's not clearly separated between parent and child and downstream. So like right now, currently in that column, you can have uh, you know in your repo you can trigger parent child pipelines and multi project pipelines in the same repo, mm -hmm. uh, we can, you know, have lots of pipelines. <laughs> yeah. So like if you navigate from the child uh, to the next pipeline, you know, that will be your parent pipeline or, or it'll lead, sorry, it'll lead back to your parent pipeline. It's, it's super confusing, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just it wanted to- It would be even more, yeah. Yeah, it would be even wanted... more confusing. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, so. <laughs> I just want to call out that what what dove label is it what we're seeing there is not only a parent child pipeline it's just illustrating when there is a child that has a label but there's another pipeline there under downstream that is not a child it doesn't have the label okay sorry dove what were you going to say i said it would be even more confusing because like customer are asking a, a way to set name to the parent child pipeline so it will be even become more and more confusing so we can, we should definitely think on how to, to differentiate between the two. I think regarding the name, we could probably make the child pipeline take the name of the trigger job in the upstream, in the parent pipeline. Uh, it just it just at the moment the two things are not uh, well uh, uh, correlated. So there's there are some improvements and we have some an issue where we can improve that. Um, yeah. But basically, when you when you look at a child pipeline, you want to see immediately where this is coming from, which job triggered that in the parent pipeline, and that could also t take the name directly of the job, a triggering job. So in a way, you also have because the the trigger job doesn't do anything else than triggering a pipeline. So it doesn't. It can. It can give a name to the child pipeline rather than because it doesn't, doesn't do anything else. And I think um, in a previous milestone uh, we did uh, where if you hover over the trigger job, so like micro micro microservice A there, if you hover over it, it'll highlight their relative downstream yeah. pipeline as well. So that that's and there is an issue by for two way correlation. Two yeah. Yeah, we didn't, we never finished that one out. I mm -hmm. think that got passed over. Mm -hmm. We're also adding, this is the one that I'm working on, which is adding 
which job has been triggered on like right on the pill. So like I have been triggered by this, this other job. So then it becomes clearer. Um, Dove number five. Um, yeah, I mean, we are keep, I mean, this is just an example, but we'll keep getting questions about additional support for parent child. And this is like general question. Uh, one of many that can come and since this is like uh, a session for, sorry, uh, for the roadmap, I was wondering your opinion about those kind of questions. Can you give me more support? I, I linked to that comment for Khan. Can you give more context on what dependencies what we're talking about here? Let me see. Implement oh, so the MR title is implement passing dot environment variables to bridge jobs. Is this the same thing as um, VTK's question earlier? Is when we're going to support passing variables? Uh, between it is kind of dependent, but it's not directly dependent to it. Oh, okay. uh, so, I mean, I, we have two options for uh, passing variables to downstream pipelines, but uh, for this, uh, we had a conversation with Marius about dependencies keyword here. So it is actually, uh, so right right now, every job can have needs keyword and dependencies keyword, but bridge jobs cannot have dependencies keywords because mm -hmm. bridge jobs uh, do, do not use uh, artifacts. Uh, so as you know, dependencies is used for filtering uh, artifacts from previous jobs. So right now, uh, I mean, here we are just asking, should we add dependencies keyword for build jobs or not? But so for me, it makes sense. It for me, it makes sense because it would make artifact passing more consistent. Uh, however, bridge jobs are, are a little bit different because bridge jobs um, create a new pipeline in a slightly different context. So the dependencies context in the downstream pipeline or child pipeline is going to be a little bit different. So it might be actually quite difficult to implement, but if we ever make it like if we ever implement this, this will be quite useful, I guess. Actually, we have this uh, feature somehow because bridge jobs can have needs keyword. So as you know, needs keyword has uh, have uh, artifacts true or false boolean. So actually we have this feature, but we have not uh, these dependencies directly. Yeah, adding the dependencies keyword to the YML file will allow us to filter out uh, artifacts. So without it, you would inherit all the variables that dot m variables that were defined in the previous jobs. But adding the dependencies, you could specify what uh, artifacts you want. Would, would that be the the child pipeline or a job in child pipeline specifying the dependencies coming from upstream pipeline? Well, why do we need the, to define the dependencies in the trigger job? The trigger job would not use the dependencies itself. Uh, like yes, not bridge jobs do to... not use dependencies. Bridge jobs do not use mm -hmm. artifacts, but they use artifacts for uh, getting dot .nv environment variables. So artifacts are, are used for uh, getting uh, data and variables for village jobs because village jobs can pass variables to the uh, downstream pipelines. So they can use artifacts for just uh, data and so I, I think if we uh, ever implement dependencies for big jobs, the way it should behave is that when you define a dependencies keyword on a big job, the jobs in the downstream pipeline receive artifacts from the jobs that were mentioned mentioned in the dependencies in the bridge job, right? So this would be this kind of 
a mechanism that is actually passing variable uh, artifacts to downstream pipeline to every job in that pipeline. It could actually be interesting, but I, I think we should actually create an issue and discuss this asynchronously. There are too many caveats and yeah. like losing aspects of this feature. Um, okay. Um, uh, I'll create the issue for that. For further async. Um, okay. So actually moving on to agenda item six, this is something that um, Fabio, you had mentioned in the CI weekly meeting last week that I was really curious to have for the discussion on. Do you want to talk through your thought there on item six? Yeah, so it's kind of linked to the in general also to how we handle artifacts with parent child pipeline. But um, so when we use, when we first uh, uh, implement the MVC for parent child pipeline, we actually use the strategy depend feature that it was already implemented in multi project pipelines, um, which by default is not enabled. Uh, so it means that when you run a pipeline, either multi-project pipeline or child pipeline without specifying strategy depend, it will run as uh, asynchronous. So it will be more like a sort of detached pipeline uh, that runs and finishes, but the parent pipeline will not wait for it. It will not even uh, try to, uh, it will not be affected by the, the result of the child pipeline. Um, so this is kind of a default feature, uh, a default setting. So if you want to wait for the child pipeline, where the parent pipeline actually spawns something and then waits for it, and also gets a, the final status from the parent pipeline is reported back into the trigger job, you have to use strategy depend. Uh, while this might make sense for a multi-project pipeline, when working when working on new features that we are um, implementing about uh, handling artifacts with parent child pipeline, I realized that it's it's it should be highly recommended to have strategy depend for parent child pipeline. I know we've kind of changed this as the, by default to be enabled for parent child pipeline because it probably might be confusing. Um, but somehow, which I think we should move towards uh, making that the recommended behavior. So where when you create a parent a child pipeline, by default the parent should should wait for the child pipeline unless you want it to run asynchronously. Um, so I completely agree with you. I, I think this should be a default. However, it's not possible for us to change it right now yeah, because it yeah. would be backwards compatible. So yeah, that's you yeah, know yeah. The, the same old problem of introducing changes that are not really backwards compatible and allowing users to opt in for the new syntax or a new behavior. So there is this issue about CIM versioning or behavior versioning or, you know, any kind of mechanism that would allow us to break compatibility uh, in a way that user opts in for the new behavior and we never break behavior for users that are not, uh, that, that do not know about this change, right? So users should opt in for a new behavior. So how to achieve that? I think it's important because we are seeing more and more problems like that. And we still do support syntax that have been abandoned like six or seven years ago, but we still need to support all the code around that because there is no way to actually properly deprecate anything or measure the, the usage in an efficient way. But in this case, I, I do agree it should be default one day perhaps. Yeah, so I, I think there might be a kind of a halfway uh, solution way we could use where, uh, so right now, like the strategy depend means wait for the downstream pipeline, but also uh, mirror the, the downstream status when that pipeline finishes. Uh, so with the handling of artifacts, in reality, what we need is to solve the waiting part. Uh, we don't really need to care uh, about the whether the downstream pipeline passes or fails. Um, so, and I'm not sure, maybe maybe there's some kind of a thinking discussion we can have about that, but there's something we could uh, do to move forward. But basically the, the, the main problem is that we want to make, 
available, all the artifacts that are generated within the parent and child pipeline entire hierarchy, we want to make these reports uh, uh, artifacts available for the merge request to be visible. Uh, so because the merge request asks the pipeline, the head pipeline for all the reports that can be displayed in the merge request, the parent pipeline should look uh, at the, itself if it contains any reports and all the child pipelines. So kind of cascade this, this search of, art, of artifacts and reports. And then whatever is being collected can be displayed in the merge request. So this means the parent pipeline can have visibility across the entire hierarchy for reports they are generated. Uh, but for this to happen uh, effectively, and uh, we have to ensure that all the child pipelines complete before the parent pipeline completes, um, because otherwise that can lead to inconsistent results. Um, so this is kind of the problem we, we, we have, and, and it's not something we have to discuss now in detail, so we have to solve, but uh, there is this need of trying at least to move uh, uh, towards the strat default strategy depend or try to uh, make something like a, a maybe a default waiting for the pipelines and, and maybe it could be maybe introducing a different type of strategy, but this is kind of the problem we might need to. And I believe this is a very interesting problem, uh, something that, that we should solve, but it's not clear how to solve that. We might have an idea about how it should behave, then we might have a bunch of issues about how users want, want it to behave. The problem is that without using the feature, which is my next point on the agenda, we won't be able to make a right call and right decision about what to build and how to do that. Like, it's so complex. Well, today we do have uh, we do have customer requests to say, I want to generate my reports in a child pipeline, but those reports are not displayed in the merge request. And the only way is to make sure that the parent pipeline can also look in the child pipeline. So we do have this kind of user request. The problem yeah, is but, that- But that's uh, exam, again, this uh, kind of request of what user wants and not necessarily what they need without using the feature we won't understand what users actually need. We will know what they want, but it's not necessarily something we should yeah. do. Um, I just wanted to jump in um, and say that if we use the feature, it's also, it's gonna give us another data point, but it's also just going to be our opinion. So the problem validation effort that we're planning to run with, or with uh, um, between PM and UX, I think it will also help us a lot. So I think, we should consider everything like we should consider what the customers are requesting if we can dock food it that would be great to get that kind of um feedback and the you know first-hand experience uh with how it should work and like what what is annoying um and then we should also just talk to our users and maybe even run a survey to get some uh quantitative data as well that will help us understand exactly um, how it should behave and um, how how needed is it really um, by, by like what what portion of users and so on. But it will take some time to, to do that, but I think it would be worth it. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that feedback from users is very valuable. It's almost priceless, but uh, it's even more important and valuable when you understand why users do need and want something. When you just you know collect feedback and read about it and don't really understand why this is something that users need or why that's something that they want so yeah of course it could be much more useful when after actually using the feature and understanding why the customers are requesting something So, uh, next... so that's I think my next point is exactly yeah. what I uh, covered already. I, I just wonder how, what can we do to like use it somewhere. Uh, the handbook www.github.com project would be perfect because I know that we are trying to separate uh, pipelines for uh, parts of handbook block block handbook that's that's going to be a separate thing. So having separate pipelines 
uh, for, for a blog and handbook could be you know a nice use case to use child parent pipelines in case of gitlab project itself i i know that we have separate pipelines for docs we have separate pipelines for uh, a few different things actually right and we could use child parent pipelines to separate it even better and actually dog food you know so uh, that that might be interesting uh, that that's going to be difficult uh, i think that dog fooding is always related to some kind of pain that uh, we need to like you know use our own features uh, then discover all the shortcomings like problems fix them and it's never smooth but in my opinion it's worth it uh, how to do that without uh, a negative impact on developers productivity that's a different story but something we could actually work uh, to get done Fabio Atem is next. Uh, yeah, so um, so I had there, and we have an issue about the CI recipes somewhere. I I just let me I need to find it. But uh, basically, this I, I think when we think about what could be the next use of parent child pipeline or, or uh, what other uses that can be there aside from breaking down a pipeline uh, in smaller cases, uh, I think what we could like. Like the concept of CI recipes, I think I imagine more parent child pipeline to be used more like the equivalent of GitHub action actions, where we can we have a defined structure of a piece of CI that does something specifically is self self contained, um, but then we can call that from any pipeline and say I I need to deploy something on AWS, but I know we have. Uh, a template for deploying on AWS, for example, uh, a, a YAML file to deploy on AWS, it just requires some input data and then can do that for you. So rather than you try to understand how to include that um, into your pipeline, you can possibly just call that as a child pipeline, pass the necessary data and treat that as a black box and, 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 and use that that way. So uh, that could be another an interesting uh, solution um i i i'd happened like in in the past where we were working with some customers um that they were interested in parent child pipeline they were also interested in to how they can have like a repository uh, where they only manage ci files and that can is actually developers don't have access to that there's only the infrastructure team will have access to it and they manage all the ci files and then uh, each project within the same group will point to those files to actually run either uh, the whole pipeline or parts of the pipeline using parent-child uh, parent pipelines. So this, I think, is an interesting idea of how we can have a repository where you, you have all your recipes that you need for the entire group or, 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 or instance, and, and then you have different projects just referring to, to snippets of it to, to actually run independently as, as a child pipeline. Uh, so that could be another kind of interesting uh, idea that could be used. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Uh, we've been thinking about it uh, when working on the Verify three-year vision and having the, you know, creating these building blocks um, will make it much easier for, uh, for users that are just starting out as well, for example. It will make things much easier. Yeah, because uh, today, uh, if you want to use like a template, um, you still have to know, you still have to read inside the template and understand exactly what it does and 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 then arrange the jobs that are coming from that template within your pipeline because you have to see where they fit to within your stages of the pipeline. While if, if we have, instead of being like, if having the template that you include, you have uh, a CI files and you just run independently as a child pipeline, then 
uh, that will run in the stage where you decide to trade it. And, and it, I think it removes a lot of the uh, learning curve and try to understand how to use certain templates or how to do a specific thing. Uh, and it's treated more like a, a black box or a building block where you can simply call it like a, a function that is there available. You just need, we need, would need to document for every sort of, or every recipe that we will make available, what input parameters uh, we, can be passed in. And for input parameters, we could use the, the variables that the trigger job can pass downstream. Sorry, I have the contractors in the house and a lot of noise. I don't know if I, I'm missing any, any questions or anything. Because or... my internet is not stable uh, as well, so I'm not sure. Fabio, about the CI recipes, when you mentioned that we can trigger, like we want to point user to CI recipe, where are we going to host this? I mean, but maybe we can work on that async, but I just want to understand when we trigger a, a, a child pipeline, we need to mention to include YAML file. So are we suggesting yes. to bundle this YAML file, but we cannot touch the project, like we cannot touch the user project. So like, how can yes. we point them to that? So uh, either, so I, I think like a, a, a boring solution would be to make a, uh, uh, recipes public project on GitLab, uh, where we host a lot of YAML files per category, different folders, or whatever. And then we could each YAML each folder will have like a README and a YAML file. And then if you want to understand how to use that, you you read the README, you, s you understand what input parameters are there, what that that snippet of pipeline does, and then if you want to run from your project. Uh, could be on a different group because somewhere else completely within the GitLab instance, you would do, um, you will use the trigger include and then you specify the project and the file that you want to read. So what we will do is we spawn a child pipeline, take that file, evaluate it, and that will be will become the structure of the child pipeline that runs. We pass in the, the, the variables and that and you don't have to do anything else. You don't need to even maintain that. Like you simply have to just reference it. For sure, there is problems maybe with um, uh, versioning that we want we might need to look at. You know, if somebody changes the, the upstream the recipe, you can break every, everything else. You know, there might be some kind of problems like versioning and security things like that. But this is like the general idea of how what, what that would look like. Then if we don't want to make it like a public project, we want to make part of our, the way we store templates within uh, any GitLab uh, instance by default, there could be maybe instead of templates could be another, another category called recipes, which would be the same. And then you can include that recipe in, uh, like, like a template. Uh, and the same thing, we still by leverage they include. It's just we are, you define where you want that config file to come from. Yeah, this is very interesting. Like, so, so like your first suggestion is very similar to like create some sort of a marketplace, and yeah, similar to a marketplace we have in GitHub or something like that. Yeah, either is a public project where anybody can contribute there and add new recipes, something like that. Um, that probably could be like a, an idea. Uh, so, um, I'll, um, I'll, what I'll do from the notes from the agenda, I'll add the ones that we want to take further action on into our issue for async collaboration, the issue for feature vision for parent child pipeline. And um, we can continue the discussion there. We're, we're pretty much out of time here. I'll upload the video for anyone who wants to, to go back on this discussion and, and examine it. Um, let me know at some point, I think we should regroup after the problem validation research is done um, to, to go over that. Cause I think that is probably going to impact what we want to work on next as well. Um, and then 
um, on the question of are, are we dog fooding it? Um, I made a note, Nadia, we'll include in our research, uh, our internal teams to find out who's, who's dog fooding it um, and find out what their, their feelings are about the feature. Sounds good. Thanks folks, super interesting discussion. Um, thanks for joining everyone. Have a great day.